The Philistines defeat Israel. In our last story, we learned about the rise of Samuel. In contrast to Eli's sons, Samuel was attentive to the voice of God. He served the Lord and his people selflessly and was chosen by God to guide Israel in a period of darkness and uncertainty. In this story, we learn about the Philistines re-emerging as a threat to Israel. They take Israel's most prized possession, the Ark of the Covenant. The Philistines quickly learn that even though the Israelites are weak, their God is not to be trifled with. Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last reading, we heard the story of how Hannah prayed for a child and promised God to give her son back to him to serve God his whole life. God granted Hannah's request and she gave birth to Samuel. When Samuel was old enough, Hannah took him to Eli the priest to raise him in the temple as a servant of the Lord. Samuel grew up knowing God and serving him, unlike Eli's own son. And when he was still young, God spoke to Samuel, telling him that a new priesthood would be established. Samuel was to be God's chosen man to lead Israel in a whole new era. Today, we'll see a familiar foe rising up against Israel. The Philistines are once again a thorn, a terrible pain in the sight of Israel. Israel will call upon God's presence, taking the Ark of the Covenant into battle. But it will be carried by Eli's sons, and we'll see how God's judgment against these two wicked men would cost the entire nation dearly and lead to the loss of their most sacred symbol. Let's listen now to today's reading. The guidance of Samuel comforted the children of Israel. His wisdom and closeness to God brought them great relief— for they had been far from God for too long. His words brought life, and the light of God's love was slowly replacing the shadows that hovered over their hearts. Yet a darkness was still present on the outskirts of Israel. Miles away, the horde of Philistines lurked in the shadows like a pack of wolves. They waited patiently for the perfect moment to strike the sheep of Israel. The Philistines approached the wilderness outside Israel and postured themselves in provocation. Israel accepted their challenge and marched as one army against the Philistine menace. Israel camped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines camped a little ways away at Aphek. Like tidal waves against a lost ship, the Philistines crashed upon the armies of Israel. The battle spread in many directions, and Israel was tossed to and fro. 4,000 Israelite soldiers were crushed, stabbed, and strangled under the hot Middle Eastern sun. Israel ran for their lives, retreating back to a safe place to strategize. The Israelite elders writhed, dumbfounded that they would be defeated so easily. Why has God done this? they shouted. Then the elders remembered the stories of old, how Joshua brought forth the Ark of the Covenant before the Jordan River and the walls of Jericho. They smiled and spoke again, saying, We must bring forth the Ark of the Covenant. If God is before us, we shall have power over our enemies. The elders' intentions were pure and their ideas were sound. Yet they overlooked the most important detail of all. The sons of Eli were in charge of the Ark. The two wicked priests, Hophni and Phinehas, were the overseers of the Ark of the Covenant, and God had vowed to destroy them for their wickedness. Ram's horns sounded in the distance. The beaten-up soldiers of Israel poked their heads out of their tents. In the distance, the Ark of the Covenant was being brought into the camp. Chills of hope crawled up their spines. A new song was sung that day among the children of Israel. They sang and shouted to God, knowing that he would deliver them as he had hundreds of times before. Hophni and Phinehas puffed their chests up with pride as they heard the cheers of the soldiers. They craved the attention. Even though the worship was directed towards God, they soaked up the praises of his people. As soon as the ark arrived, Israel's shouts resounded like an earthquake across the land. The Philistines could hear their battle cries and quivered with fear. They had caught word that the ark of the covenant had made its way into camp. The Philistines were no fools. They knew what God had done to the Egyptians. They had been told stories of their gods splitting seas and crushing armies. 
They understood perhaps more than Israel what it truly meant to fear God. Their God will strike us down by fire or plague, some of them shouted. We have never faced a threat like this. We are doomed, more of them exclaimed. One commander of the Philistine army stood tall among them and shouted, Take heart, O Philistines! Do you wish to become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to us? He raised his spear high in the air and shouted, Be men and fight! The Philistine horde erupted in screams of war and bloodthirst. Without hesitation, they descended upon Israel like a tempest. The Philistines showed no mercy. They tore men apart limb from limb. Complete chaos ensued across the Israelite army and camp. Every man retreated to protect himself, and mighty warriors begged for mercy under the sword of the Philistines. Hophni and Phinehas were in their tent eating when the Philistines attacked. It was their responsibility to protect the Ark of the Covenant. However, when the Philistines stormed the camp, the two priests gathered their belongings and abandoned the Ark. They ran for their lives, leaving the people behind them. Their lungs heaved as they ran with their fattened bodies, for they continually gorged themselves on the temple's food. They were immediately knocked to the ground by two Philistine soldiers. Fumbling around in the dirt, the two brothers had no time to collect their thoughts before an axe was lodged into their skulls. By the hand of the Philistines, God fulfilled his promise to rid Israel of their selfish and wicked priests. The Philistines looked upon the abandoned Ark of the Covenant. They laughed and drug it back to their camp over the dead bodies of fallen Hebrews. The represented and manifest presence of God was being taken back to the Philistine camp, something they believed to be a victory. Yet God cannot be captured. No, the Philistines would live to regret ever touching a single finger on the sacred relic of God. Unlike Israel, God can fight his own battles. A Benjamite boy ran for his life from the slaughter. Dirt and blood caked his face, and his clothes were torn to expose his wounded and bloodied body. Eli sat beside the road a few miles away from battle, listening to the cries of his people. Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his body trembled constantly. He wept for his fallen brothers, and wondered about his son's safety. Eli spotted the Benjamite boy, hobbling his way towards the city to warn the people. What is this uproar coming from the battlefield? Eli asked. The Benjamite could barely see straight. Gasping for air, he managed to recount the battle to Eli. With great anguish, he said, Israel has fallen to the Philistines. All have fled in different directions. Your sons, Hophni and Phinehas, have been slain, and the Ark of the Covenant has been stolen. Eli clutched his heart upon hearing the news. His eyes rolled back, and he stumbled backwards and fell by the side of the gate. His neck fell on a curb and snapped. Eli, not too long after his sons, perished. He had judged and ministered over Israel for forty years. Israel had lost over thirty-five thousand soldiers, their priests, and the Ark of the Covenant. The hope that once caused them to cheer was replaced with fear and panic. In many ways, they felt as though God was taken captive. Yet God is captive to no army, nor is he confined to a relic. The Philistines would soon learn to not trifle with the God of Israel, and the Hebrews would behold God's sufficiency and power. When we begin today's reading, Samuel is already a leader in Israel. His closeness with God has established him as a trusted voice for God among the people. Israel has been distant from God now for many years, but now, under Samuel's leadership, they are turning back to the Lord. Still, there is danger lurking, enemies intent on defeating God's people. And one of those is a familiar foe, the Philistines. The two clash in battle, and Israel is defeated by the Philistines. They run to safety, but only after 4,000 Israelite soldiers die. The elders of Israel, of course, are wondering why God allowed this terrible defeat. Then they remembered their stories, how God went with Joshua into battle, handing him victory after victory. So in 1 Samuel 4.3, they say, Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. They knew they absolutely needed God in this fight. 
It, of course, is a reminder for us today that the battle is always the Lord's. We do not face our battles alone. God has promised us victory in our Lord Jesus Christ, so he is our weapon. He is our defender. The elders' hearts were in the right place. They wanted God's presence, but there was a huge problem. Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were in charge of the ark, and they brought and carried this ark into battle. The mere sight of the ark filled the troops with excitement, and they shouted loudly. When the Philistines discovered the ark was with Israel, they knew this battle would be different. There was now a divine force with Israel. But they didn't retreat. They only fought more fiercely, determined not to be conquered by the Hebrews. And once again, they came out victorious, sending terrified Israelis scurrying in fear. But Hophni and Phinehas, along with 30,000 soldiers, were killed. Just as God had told Samuel, Eli's sons were wiped off the face of the earth and punished for their blasphemy. One thing we can always know, God will execute his judgment when necessary. These two men had abused and misused their position. They had disrespected God and refused to change their hearts in repentance. So God dealt forcefully with their sin. Tragically, their sins cost an entire nation. As Israel fell to the Philistines in this battle, despite the presence of the ark, unresolved, unrepented of sin always has consequences. And God did not give victory to his people on that day because of the sins of Eli the priest's sons. The Philistines rejoiced in victory, and when they saw the ark abandoned on the battlefield, they took it as a prize because they wanted a divine presence with them. But God will not be used like that. And when unholy hands tried to weaponize God's power for their own benefit, they will pay a heavy price. The Philistines would soon discover just how high that price would be. When Eli heard of the defeat of Israel and the fate of his sons, he fell out of his seat and broke his neck. God's words to Samuel came true that day. To Israel, God's glory had departed from them. The glory had departed. The word is Ichabod. But God was not done with his people, and the next time we'll hear how the ark returns to Israel. Dear God, first of all, we turn from our sins and trust in you. We thank you for the cross where you died for us and for the resurrection. May we live in the power of Jesus and his resurrection. We know that we never in Christ fight our battles alone. May we always look to you and trust in you and experience a closeness to you and therefore victory in Jesus. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham of Dallas, Texas, and you can download the Pray.com app and make prayer the priority of your life. It is our prayer that you would know Jesus Christ in a personal way. Jesus and knowing him is the key to understanding the Bible. Jesus is on every page in the pathway of Scripture. So I pray that you would know him and look to him for eternal life. As we see all of these stories, some of them very sordid, we realize just how desperately we all need the Lord. So invite Christ into your life and receive him as your Lord and Savior. I would also encourage you to download the Pray.com app and let others know about this podcast. And if you want more resources on how to know God and experience his presence in your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.